The power of one. The power of two. The power of many. following contains offensive language and spoilers listener discretion is advised i don't know that one god save the queen yeah you it, was on, it was on episode one <laughs> Sex it was on episode one okay <laughs> First and the beginning of it. Okay, I'm sorry. I had the themes all of a Anyway, welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies. We're Nurse New Bully. Me host Leroy, a.k.a. The Power of One. The Power of Two. The Power <laughs> of Many. With my co-host. Uh, yeah, this is Eli, a.k.a. Cherry Limeade. <laughs> what? That, that is a reference to something. What is that a reference to? Sonic Everybody's drink? talking about... Because no, I, I get that, but everybody's talking about Cherry Lime on my on my on my timeline right now. Really? Like, did I miss something? Yes. Everybody's talking about Cherry Lime on my part on my timeline right now. I'm like, what's so special? Did I miss something? Did it do a so sales week or something? Or? So I made a ref a pop reference, a pop culture reference. I don't even know. I, I guess you're part of the zeitgeist now. I guess I don't know. Just, Whoa, yeah. man! Did they, you am, made it. Am, am I the AI? <laughs> <laughs> you made it. Shout out. As a matter of fact, shout out to the AI. Either shout out I'm to the AI. Name, I'm going to name him. <laughs> His name is Iverson. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it may stick. It may not. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we're going to start off this podcast. And uh, even though we, we got a little pep in our step this week, I, uh, we're going to bring it down a little bit because something happened this week. Uh, we had we had a few deaths that we had to talk about. Now, Eli, I know we're going to break out one rule because you, know, you gave us a rule on the podcast that we can't do. And you know me. I'm good for sticking to rules on this podcast. Uh, but you said so one of the rules that we can't talk about uh, other YouTube podcasts or other. Oh, shit. Here. that's yeah. right. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. But like I said, we're going to break the one rule because the rule we're going to break is I want to say rest in peace to Benny Potter, a.k.a. Comic Story. Now, Eli, before I go forward, do you even know who this is? I do. Yes, you do know who this is. OK, yeah, yeah. look at you partly, with your finger on the poles. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm aware. I'm, I'm a fucking nerd. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So here's the thing. So some of you listen to the podcast don't know who this is, but I guarantee you, and I've looked at the analytics. The majority of you that listen to the podcast know who this is. You probably know who that is before you know who we are. Yeah. So because the thing is, for people that know who Comic Story is, like I said, Benny Potter is uh one of the OGs of comic book YouTubing. Like he's one, he started on the ground floor, on the ground level. Like when this first start really got going, he was one of the ones that started it. And he was one of the biggest ones that was at it at the time. Uh, like we, like we have a small footprint on the, on the, on YouTube and other platforms, social medias right now where he did, he was in the millions. Like he had millions mm -hmm. of followers, millions of views doing stuff like that. So he had those videos. Matter of fact, his traffic affected our traffic. That's how big he was. Like when you go searching for, oh, I want to know what X-Men such and such is. You're going to hit his podcast first. You're going to hit his numbers first. And then it trickles down to the stuff we do later on. So you get, so everybody knows about him first. That's why, you know, like I started doing all these, like, uh, these YouTube reviews and stuff like these comic book reviews. A lot of them I won't do and can't do because he already did them like 10 years ago. And it got like 25 million views. So it's like there's no reason for me to do Infinity Gauntlet because he already did it. And it's bigger than anything else. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's the yeah. point of that one. Yes. So, like I said, huge, did a lot of numbers, uh, pretty much like the Injustice. He pretty much did Injustice, like that whole comic review. The whole review is like fucking 10 hours. He did it. It's got like music views like that. So, he he did a bunch of numbers. That's the thing. So, give a shout out to him. 
a lot of our podcasts what we do even though we're very niche very underground that's why we don't really share this out of, i know when we even start this podcast you like you know it also this isn't made for everybody you either into it or you're not this isn't yeah. a relationship podcast or a, a, a life coaching podcast no we talk about comic books so it ain't for everybody but part of what we do was inspired from what he did so shout out to benny also i want to say one more thing marvel and dc y'all need to do something for him because he brought a lot of attention to y'all he ain't toxic that's what i'm saying you you got good people like him going you got all these other toxic motherfuckers running around here but we're not gonna talk about that uh yeah no shit no shit yeah that's That's what i'm saying man that's a good point that's actually a good good point believing man yeah that's the thing yeah yeah. you know i mean every it's it's like yeah everyone's like cashing in on on outrage you know what i mean yeah that seems to what like yeah and that's bullshit because <laughs> we could do that yeah. we could totally do we that we could we could do that yeah but, we won't. We can't but it's yeah. stupid we're, we're we don't uh, yeah we're just yeah we're we're right. sick of that shit you know right and they're at the <laughs> point now eli they don't even pretend like they're not doing it they're yeah. telling you they're grifting like yeah we're grifting we don't care yeah <laughs> it gets us hits that gets, gets us a hit we're doing it that te- they're telling you they're doing it so yeah meanwhile you got good people like that actually putting work into it uh yeah what some of the review injustice injustice was a good review uh pretty much he made injustice comic that game because he hit right when the game hit everybody was like well what about the game because everybody thought the comic was just another comic when he did it the way he did it that shit was like a movie so his you injustice review of the comic is better than the video game <laughs> so, <laughs> so definitely check him out definitely do that marvel dc do something for him just like when one of your guys that you in your bullpen you know passway stuff like that you do something in this insert do something for benny yeah, yeah. Benny helped out out way more than y'all think he did yeah yeah that's what i yeah. keep seeing like i wasn't a regular follower yeah. of him i mean i but i was aware of him um mm-hmm. but yeah i mean you know a lot of people were saying like they they would have they checked out certain comic runs because of him, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it was up to him. So he started, and it's other guys. It's like huge guys up there also. But like, yeah. said, we're not going to get to that. Comics explained, but, and oh, am I breaking the rules? See, see, see the, you're, not, you're breaking your own rule. You're like, <laughs> I was not trying to go there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Was, it, it, it don't matter. It don't yeah. matter. You know what, Eli? I'm such an asshole that I will tag those guys in the in like our, before this shit. I will tag them. <laughs> Comics explain comics. The reason I tag them because they're so big. They're like, hopefully, we'll fuck it. Cape Joel, fuck it. Cape Joel. I tag all those guys. I'm like, man, maybe we can get some of their traffic, you know, come down here. So, <laughs> oh, it's Let's see. So, hold on. We'll hey, go. Jakey Poo's in the house. We've been ignoring Jake. I'm sorry, Jake. We didn't mean to be you. Oh, you biggest gun tag. We, we appreciate you, Jake. Yes. Oh, uh, we hopefully you check out, check out comic story, Jake. You might like them, but hell. We appreciate we appreciate Jake yeah. and everybody else. So yeah. yeah. Uh so that's all I want to say to moving on past that. Rest in peace to comic story and rest in peace to Benny. His wife did not say what happened. So anybody thinks they know what happened, you don't know what happened. Stop spreading rumors. Yeah. So well, that's all have we got a good journey, that. sir. Yeah. Have a good journey. Oh, we're we're almost done, Eli. We okay. we got another one. Okay. Now, also because like I said, you know, I'm a big basketball fan. So I gotta I gotta say this. This was real quick. Rest in peace to Jerry West. You know, when top five seventy basketball players of all time up there, won championships with the Lakers, won championships as a uh, GM, all stuff like that. Uh, him in his younger days, like that. Eli, does that look familiar? That pose uh, or the dribble? Oh shit! I guess does now. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's the logo. So okay. the logo is based on him. Matter of fact, that was his nickname, the logo. Not only was it named logo because the logo was based off him because he used to shoot the basket from the logo from half court and will hit that shit before the three-point line was even Venice. He was a really, really, really good player. So that's all. Just want to put that out there. Uh, well, rest yeah. in peace to cheer with. Rest yeah. in peace. Good journey to him too. Yeah. Now, can we move on past that? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Now we're going to talk about it. Like I said, I saw a TV show. Eli also saw a TV show, but we're going to talk about it. That, and we may be the only ones because I haven't really seen too much traffic about this. Other sh- shows have been taking up a lot of the traffic, but we're going to bring you news on it. We're going to talk about The Boys. The nah, Boys. Okay. Now, Eli, I know some people that have never heard of this show, never seen this show, anything like that. I'm like, where have y'all been? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's I like guess. season four right now. Maybe, so, yeah. maybe Prime isn't as big as we thought it was. 
<laughs> Maybe it's not. How does he compare to NJ? Nobody compares to NJ, MJ. Not even LeBron James, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> this, this isn't that podcast. <laughs> uh yeah but we're gonna talk about the boys real quick okay so the boys is now on season four we're on season four right now they just finished season three i don't know like two years ago a year ago. i don't it's know it's been a while it feels while. like it's been a while yeah yeah it's been a while since it happened uh season three in my opinion was far and away their best season like it was they did. yeah it was though so much stuff it was funny it was hitting it had some classic scenes hero gasm yeah. You, know? <laughs> yeah you can't forget it it just has some classic scenes you yeah. have what, what's the guy's name uh the guy from supernatural can't remember his oh, name. Oh, uh, uh, Pat- some not super patriot. It was he was like a Captain America, uh, so, soldier boy, like a soldier boy, soldier boy, soldier yeah. boy. And then he was rapping, uh, Blondie's, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rap <to> light. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Rap- he was rapping, yeah, <laughs> like that's the dumbest shit ever, man. <laughs> but it was hilarious out there. Uh, a homelander was just bringing it. I was like, man, it was awesome. So now, so when you do that, what do you do after that? And I, I'll be honest with you, I said some controversial. shit. And like another movie group that I was in that I think they might have kicked me out because I said that shit. But what I said was the season four of most TV shows are their worst season. That's all I said. You know what? I'm uh, the first the first thing I thought of was community. Season four was their worst Se- season. Season four is when they when Dan Harmon got canned. He got canned. And he wasn't on that season. They had yeah. some other guys trying to write like Dan Harmon. Yeah. And it, 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 it hit. It hit. Now, I'm not saying every season four is bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying out of your favorite TV shows, when you think about season four, season four is normally the worst. Now, you have people, fuck you. Why it was the best season, season four in Breaking Bad? I didn't watch all this shit. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying the shit I saw. <laughs> season four is usually the worst season. So yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, there's no bad season three. That I hate to say that, Jake. That is the reason it got canceled. <laughs> Although I will say this: season six is highly underrated. It is highly underrated. Yeah, season the one that was on was it? Uh, 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 ya- Yahoo. 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 It went to Yahoo. Yeah, remember Yahoo had a streaming service for. Uh, for a little bit and community season six went to yahoo <laughs> now that you say that now i remember that I yeah like, yahoo but, but that was pretty good <laughs> it was because i didn't watch it i was like i don't want to watch this shit on yahoo but then i think i watched it like on netflix or yeah Hulu it's on netflix like and all that shit yeah, yeah. and i watched that i was like wait this isn't bad this yeah. actually like some episodes really the paintball episode was probably one of their best paintball episodes. Those were always good. Always the paintball episode. Yeah, but but that one was like extra good. It was like, there's no reason it should be this good on season six. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, what, what, hold up. We got here. Uh, are we going to review the... No, 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 no. We will not. Sorry, Jake. We will not. If you, if you read even the first issue of the comic, you will realize why we won't review that. <laughs> I'm sure we <laughs> mentioned it here and there. We have mentioned it. We have mentioned it plenty of time. Anytime we talk about boys, we're like, don't read the comic, basically. <laughs> we we have a I have my issue with the comics. Eli says he has issues with the comics. The TV show is much better than the comic. It it just is. So I mean, yeah, the the, the comic is a lot more violent and yeah. more uh it's shock value just for shock yeah, value. Yeah, yeah. It's Garth Ennis. I mean, you know, yeah, and, and as we all know, Garth Ennis hates superheroes right (laughs) (laughs) and that's what the boys about his hatred for superheroes he can just have this they're doing the worst possible shit ever yeah superheroes are assholes and that's what this show is (laughs) and and it goes a little deeper in the comic i I, I know we say we want to talk about the comic i guess we'll talk about the comic now it goes a little deeper because you got like uh parodies of teen titans parody of man the batman and robin he did that that (laughs) shit lives in my head i saw that shit i'm like i can't unsee that is that the guy the on the, the, the moon when he was <laughs> see half the shit we can't even say them. They, they go way too far. They go way too far in the comics. So, yeah. When he was so, when he was fondling himself on the skyscraper <laughs> to the moon, right? Wasn't it what the fall oh, got? Yeah, I, it, I yeah, guess. we we can't. We well, no. Uh, honestly, <laughs> the comic is disturbing. It disturbs me. I don't know about Lira, uh, uh, Eli, what his threshold is. The comic disturbs me. <laughs> well, hero gasm in the comic is way, it's, it's, it's way, wor- way <laughs> more it, d- disturbing yeah. and fucked up than you see on the show. <laughs> <laughs> right, and the show is pretty fucked up. Some people just yeah. like I'm out. I can't. You know. <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, that's what's going on there. So all right, so what do we think about season four? Like I said, it, my personally, I was thinking about 
season four is the worst season fours of, of the show. To me, starting off, Eli, so far, it seems like this might be the worst season. Not okay. bad. Not bad. Like I said, I watched the first three episodes. I think the third episode was my favorite out of the three. But it, it felt like they're kind of running out of steam a little bit. They're kind of retreading a little stuff. They're trying to come up with new stuff, but I don't know if it's hitting like it was before. It's I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, I I, I only watched the, the first episode. Yeah. Um, and yeah, after watching that first episode, I didn't feel compelled to. Ooh, I got to see the next one. So well, is that, is that because you feel like you've seen this before? Well, I felt I, yeah a bit because I remember like the end of season three. There was all this momentum going in. I mean, there was a way to there was a way to defeat Homelander and shit, you know, take away his powers and all that shit. So I felt they just like kind of reset reset everything going into the season again. Right. And we're just back did that at the end of every other season, also. Yeah. And then now we're just back to status quo. How do we take out Homelander? Right. And what what Ho- Homelander's cooking up another scheme to, you know, of world domination. Mm-hmm. And um and it's just, yeah, it's just, okay, I've seen this before. And was, so there wasn't really anything in that first episode that really wowed me. It was more violent shit, more the violence is there, the gore is there, the satire is there. They, they've ramped up the violence. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the satire. Almost to perverted levels, it's like, okay, we, we haven't matched the comic. They still haven't matched the comic, but it's like they're getting closer to the comic. Yeah, and the satire. Is there? It's they're making fun of superheroes. They're making fun of superhero movies, superhero th- comics. You know. Here's my thing, Eli. I think that's where the show is dropping the ball. The satire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. The violence is always going to be there. The violence of the boys. That's what you come in and stuff like that. But I've always felt like the first three seasons of the of the boys that the satire was the best thing about the show because it all it, it, it satire everything. Uh, because basically the superheroes are standing for everything. Celebrities. Uh, athletes, uh, politicians, whatever you yeah, want to be, they're yeah. all that. However, I think in season four, and you'll see it when you watch it, you know, some more seasons, I mean, episodes of it, is that it, it it always felt like it was subtext in the first three seasons. Like, you you there, but it's there. In four, it's no longer subtext. It's text. It's there. It's in your face. They want you to understand that Homeland is Trump, and they shove that shit in your face as much as they can. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much yeah. yeah, It's pretty much the plot of this season is blue state versus red state. That's what he he was on trial, like episode one. He was on trial, right? Um, I think they even said something about like uh, the election is on January sixth, something like that. They they mentioned January sixth on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's not as deep. It's not as clever as it was. Right. It's not as not as clever as what it was. So that's that's why I was like, oh, it's fine. It's there. Everything's there. It's just not hitting. Yeah, the steam, the thrill yeah. is gone. I guess you know the yeah. steam is being it's losing its steam. About the only thing I found interesting, and in that, and like I said, I only watched episode one. The mm-hmm. only thing I found interesting was uh, was it named Sage or something? Sister Sage. I was just about to say that. Sister yeah. Sage so far is the the runaway character there, and she gets better uh, doing this doing the uh, other episode trying to yeah, right here. but no, just that Sister Sage, yeah, yeah, just that initial conversation. That she has with Homelander yeah. when he goes to when he goes and visits her and how, I mean she's the smart that's her power she's the smartest person on she, earth she's like the Lex Luthor Ozymandias of the the boys world yeah and she's totally cynical she's like I you know I I ain't gonna wear I don't want to join the seven I'm not gonna wear no racist token superhero suit and right they keep calling her know? sister Sage like no my name is just Sage yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, I'm like, not like gonna Black do that. Falcon or some shit. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna do that shit. And what's the point? What's the I'm not gonna feed into this bullshit. And she knows the the, the whole thing about you know regimes rising and falling and all that. That whole speech she did. I mean, that was right. pretty compelling, I thought. And then she hit it right on the nose. Right. You know, so well, in, just, in the in the later episodes, she's putting it into action, and that's the interesting shit. Yeah, okay, yeah. Then I, yeah, and that that's yeah, that's what I'd like to see more. Because that yeah. that's what that's what I found interesting was her. You yeah. know, and how Homelander is you like? She's like, why? Why? No one wants to hear me. He's like, you're not going to listen to a black woman who's smarter right. than you. You know, like <laughs> she even knows she knows this shit. You know, and but then Homelander's like, well, I'm smart enough to listen. And I was like, whoa, okay. 
you know. Right. And, <laughs> so but I, even then, just like sports, like you can already see the conflict between those two. Yeah, like he's it, he's we know who home, we know how Homelander is. We know he's right. got ulterior motives, but it was still just that the, just that scene alone was like that. Okay, I'm paying attention now. <laughs> yeah, know? but it, it feels like Sister Sage might have ulterior motives. Motives, like what what is her end game? It feels like she's planning some other shit. Behind the shit she's already playing. Oh yeah, because when they went to the protest and she's like, "Oh, these are Homelander fans," yeah, you know who are like, you know, basically, you know, uh, kind of racist assholes, basically. Right. And she had no, she did not give a shit when they got killed, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, so again, I thought that was she's interesting. She's the interesting character, and um, so yeah, obviously more of her. I'd like to see. <laughs> yeah. Also, also the other new character, Firecracker, she doesn't pop as much as Sister Sage does, but she has an interesting story also on the show. So basically, she's, I'm trying to think, what's the best way to compare her? Okay, you know how all those right-wing Fox News TV shows have that that uh, that chick that just saying the racist shit that all the, the white dudes saying? Yeah, yeah. That's her. So she's like one of these take care. But it's it's funny. It's, it's funny the storyline they have going on. So she got some shit going on, too. She's basically... Starlight, like her arch nemesis, so they kind of like ba- she's the anti Starlight, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so I, I, I want to see where that story goes to. So, there is some interest stuff in it. It's not a bad season at all. It, it's 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 just not it hadn't got me yet. I don't believe that. No, I think no, Jake. I, I heard that also. They ended they ended at the season five. I don't know if you heard that, Eli, but yeah, they said season five is gonna be the last, last really. Season. So, there's one more season. One more season. I thought, yeah. I thought this was the last season. Mm-mm, no, the season oh. after this is last season, yeah. Maybe I was because I never watched Gen V. Maybe I was thinking Gen V was right. And see, and that's the thing like, (laughs) this doesn't really play in the Gen V. There are some mentions of Gen V, but it's like if you didn't catch it, it's it's cool, you know. No, it's not not no such thing, it's not required viewing if that makes any sense, at least not yet. Okay, so oh, but yeah, but no, it's the next season of this going to be the last season. They said that's how they planned it to begin with, and I think it's a good point to end because after a while, you kind of run in this longer than it needs to run you know mm-hmm. so but no i'm still enjoying it so far the new characters are interesting uh also funny thing about it now we know homelander is trump we got that but they also saying and anthony Starr said this the actor he also saying that he also threw a little bit extra of homelander in the season also he's basing homelander on lebron james and i thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wouldn't know that. I'm not the basketball fan, so. <laughs> okay, for the basketball fans, listen to it. I'll tell you why. Where the and when he said that, I was like, oh shit, that, that I see it. Trump and LeBron James, I see it because the thing is, because he's getting older and he's starting to see, he's starting to get gray in his hair, stuff like that. And he, and he maybe he's I pass his prime. You know, he's scared to know that. Meanwhile, his son is is about to enter the seven. Uh, I just saw a clip of LeBron James with his son. You know, practicing with the LA Lakers, he's trying to get his son on the same team as him. Okay, but he doesn't want his son to outshine him. He wants to make sure he's in the spotlight. So okay. I, when I saw, that, I was like, <laughs> interesting. Okay, now that I didn't see that coming. So, like I said, there's still some good stuff going on there. Uh, I do want to say this also. We got to talk about Mother's Milk for a second. I know nobody knows who that is, but I'm gonna talk about this. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Uh, I, I heard I saw some memes. I don't know if I saw. There we go. Okay. People are thinking that they recast Mother's Milk. They did not. It's the same guy. Same guy's been playing Mother's Milk. He just shaved and lost weight. That's all. So people think they <laughs> cloned him and, and also like that and recast low. It's the, it's the same guy that's been there. He does look different. I agree with you on that. He does look different. It was kind of took me for a second, but I like it. It's the same guy. So that's that's my only thing. I just want to just mention that and that's it. So overall, like I said, if you like the boys, you'll like this season also. You may not love this season, and they may come up with some other episodes later on that may knock it out the park. I'm just saying as of right now, I'm just like, it's cool, but at the same time, it's like we've been here before. Yeah, like the violence is the violence. I'm used to the violence now. Like, okay, yeah. cool. Like, you know, the violence is there. You got you to gotta keep me interested now right yeah and and i felt like sage was the interesting part of that episode like i said i only saw episode one so um yeah she's they the only pull, thing they yeah. didn't pull a jamie fox on this no <laughs> they did not clone <laughs> they did not clone mother's milk on this show <laughs> uh what else we got to see on there oh oh you know how they've re- been those assholes been review bombing star wars 
they review oh, yeah. the, boy, the boys yeah. also because like, uh Frenchie has a boyfriend on the show. Oh, like why is everybody shocked on it? I mean, <laughs> he's French. I mean, this <laughs> this should be like the least shocking thing on this show like that. But I will say this, and that's always been the weak spot of the boys to me. Always, anytime Frenchie and you know Kamiko go on their solo adventures and shit, that's always lost me. And it seems like that's more of this season than it's been before. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just me. It's like, it's cool. Like, get to the A plot. That's always the B plot, but I kind of don't care, you know, especially her. I mean, even though I I love her as an actor, because that's Katana from Suicide Squad, but still. But she's like Deadpool. Like, nothing can happen to her, really. Yeah. (laughs) They shoot and stab and chop her arms also like that. She just get back up. (laughs) Well, that scene with her where she got the little baby on, that yeah, Yeah, that was totally Deadpool. Okay, that did remind me of Deadpool. That's like, fuck it, she's Deadpool. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so let me say, can move on to the next part of the podcast. Sure. Okay. Well, slap a All score. Right. What do you got? What do you got? Mm, what, mm, episodes mm, one through mm. three. One, two, three. Three point five out of five. I'm gonna say three point five out of five because, like I said, it does feel like it's spinning wheels and it's t- because the first, the first other episodes of the other seasons, like by by the time you get to episode three, they they shut out the gate. Remember the very first ten minutes of season three, episode uh, episode one. Season three, episode one. I don't the remember. Ant-Man but... scene? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You just say that, you just know. Okay. They haven't done that yet. They've they've tried to mimic that, but it hasn't gone there yet. There's a scene in the second episode, Eli, that I've seen some people just said, nope, I'm out. I'm done. So, <laughs> I, I want to see where you go with that, because even I was just like, whoa, what the fuck? You know? uh, <laughs> so it, it didn't got to yet, but I'm still... I'm still there. I'm still there. I still I still want to see where it goes. So I'm going to give it 3.5 out of 5. Yeah. Just I'll based give, off the first episode, what, what, do, yeah. what do you think? I'll give it a 3. And like I said, I, only w- I watched episode okay. 1, but, you know, that's, it was enough. Fair. Yeah, it was enough. It, it wasn't great, mm-hmm. but I didn't, you know, I, 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 I'm still there. I'm still going to watch it. But, yeah, okay. I wasn't wow. Like, yeah, it's not grabbing me like it used to. Yeah. Right. That's a, that's a fair. Since you watched the first one, that's fair. Here's the thing. The third episode bumped me up a little bit i was like when it, when it got to the third episode i like okay we have movement we have momentum okay we're going somewhere with this first few episodes i like mm, you know so that's that's why i'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5 hopefully the the going forward it'll it'll pick up from there so we'll just see how it goes um mm-hmm. uh, all right let me see let's move on to the next part of the podcast okay eli i should have asked you this before we podcast but i completely forgot about it, so i'm asking you this now did you watch the acolyte <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, I gotta watch this. I gotta ask you every time. Oh, I don't. Shit. I don't know if you're gonna be like, uh-uh, I'm out. I'm done. Do you we, know. Do we want to go here? <laughs> we, we have to. We have no choice, Eli. We have no choice. To go there. I know it's the rule to not talk about Star Wars on this podcast, but we have to break the rule this week, if nothing okay. else. The reason because now from what have okay, <laughs> have you heard the chatter? I know. Yeah, people are pissed. I know people are pissed. People are pissed. People are pissed. People people are pissed. Like yeah. pissed, pissed. Uh, first off, Eli, I'm 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 pissed at us. I'm, uh, at us. You know reason you know why I'm pissed at us? Uh. Because we didn't jump on it when everybody else jumped on it. <laughs> because these other right wing YouTubers, these grifters right now, Eli. Oh my goodness, they are hand over fist right now. <laughs> Man, it's <laughs> it's just money. It's just money hand over fist right now. Man, it, we. Eli, we could have bought. I, I got. You could have bought a tank by now. <laughs> I could have had the AT and T girl by now because these dudes are making millions right now, shitting on this episode, we, and everybody's yeah. clicking on it. And we waited till now, which now is it's over with by now in in internet terms. Yeah, but we're this, here. This, now talking this about podcast, could, yeah, we could be doing a pie. We could be recording this podcast on the French Riviera. Right, know, over, in a had, villa. Just, just saying, fuck Star Wars. And all we had to just say, fuck Star Wars. Just, <laughs> and everybody just living a life. Just, but now, nah, but here we are now, just talking about. So now we, now we have to give our honest opinion. Shout out to, uh, shout out to Vernon. Shout out to Vernon because he listened to the last podcast, last episode, and he said, shout out to us because we were the only positive review of the last episode of Acolyte. And I was like, when he think about, it, I was like, yeah, we kind of were. And yeah. I didn't even think we were that positive. It was like, it was all right. It was okay. Which, but, which but, in the internet but, turns, yeah. But we didn't, you know, tear our hair out and the shit like that and kick yeah. over tables and shit like that. So I guess technically that counts as positive. Yeah. You know. All right. So here's the thing. Everybody has listened to, everybody has watched 
the acolyte. Everybody has heard every big name YouTube, which we will not name. We have named all the podcasts we're gonna name on this podcast right now. We're not naming any other ones. So you've heard what they had to say, but here's the thing: none of their opinions matter. All these guys don't matter. There's only one opinion that really matters when you listen, when you talk about Star Wars, and that's Eli's. Oh, <laughs> that's right. I OG 77. Son. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> He's the only opinion that matters. So I'm gonna sit back, shut the fuck up, and I'm gonna let Eli give his review on uh. before you go, Eli. Here's the thing. I, one more thing about this episode. I do want to say this. I feel like regardless of what anybody's opinion of this episode is. I do feel like this is the most talked about Star Wars episode we've had yeah. in years. Yeah. Whether that's a good thing or bad thing, I'm just saying it's 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 creating dialogue. <laughs> but I'm gonna let you go. What 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 do you, what you think about it? Well, like I said, I, it, I'm my opinion still stands as last week. I don't hate this show. You know, I don't hate it. You know, I I and, but I don't love it either. It's okay. It's perfectly fine mm -hmm. for as a Star Wars show. It's fine. You know, I don't love it either. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm I'm just mildly entertained by it, you know, which has basically been how Star Wars been for a while for me. I mean, sure, there's some I loved Andor and I love, well, the first couple seasons of Mando, you know, and I love Bad Batch. You know, yeah, there's there's stuff that I like more than others, but for the most part, most of this stuff is just okay to me. You know, and that's how I feel this is. This is just okay, you know. Um uh, I, I, as far as this episode, um, I, as for, May hurt that character. She's now annoying. I didn't feel she was a strong villain in the first two episodes. This episode made, I'm, I'm annoyed by it. I find her annoying. Now. <laughs> you know, honestly, I think both of the twins are pieces of shit. That's just, but... <laughs> you know, I think, um, I think the witches that, that there, there's some corny stuff. In it. Yeah, like I said, you said like it's very young adult. It's yeah. kind of like a CW show. Yes, that in that sense, it's kind of corny and cheesy at times. Yeah. You know, I thought the ritual that the witches' ritual where they're all writhing and chanting. Yeah, that chant yeah. and stuff. I thought that was very corny. They it, thought it, with that, they really did. They thought that was. Uh, let me stop. Let me stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I thought that was very cheesy and corny and kind of stereotypical witchy cult you know, hot topic shit, you know, trying to, it, it reminds, I'm indigenous, I'm native. It reminds me of non-natives at the powwow, you know, okay. where they're trying too hard. They're trying really hard to fit in and trying to out native everybody else. It's, you know, and they get very cheesy and they throw their bodies into it. And like, dude, we're just dancing here. You're not having an orgasm. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, so I thought that was kind of cheesy, you know, um, so yeah, there's that there every the, all the things that people don't like about it, I do see, and I'm not enjoying it either, you know. You know, those those same things. However, uh oh, what I do like about it, what as this as a standalone episode, I do like the message. I do like, hey, be honest, have the strength to be honest. When when the one Jedi was telling uh Osha, you have mm -hmm. to you, you can't be afraid to tell the truth. You know, and I right. thought that's a very powerful message. Like, don't be afraid to be who you are, you know. And I think during Pride Month, that's a very strong message to make. And of course, all the anti woke crowd is probably pissed off, and I don't give a fuck. Fuck them, you know, right. and they're sensitive tits and shit. Fuck them, you know. <laughs> but I thought that was a very strong message because not only, you know, it doesn't only apply, uh, apply to the Pride crowd, but it's a universal message for anybody. Don't be afraid to be the individual who you are. Don't be afraid of your own individuality. I just think that's a very powerful statement. So in that sense, I thought that was well done. You know, though everyone's talking about, oh, it's bad writing and writing sucks. No, I thought that was pretty done pretty well. Because when you look at the Jedi, the Jedi is, is like this religious sect. And then those witches are like a religious sect. So right. Though OSHA is basically rebelling against the same religious dogma as like, you know, that, that, you know, um, that the Jedi are, they're a reflection of the Jedi. So she's going against the, you know, against tradition, against the grain to be who she wants to be. She wants to be an individual, yeah. even though far from her sisters. So. Yeah. Even though her culture and her religion, you know, forbids it, you know, so I thought that was very well done, you know. 
And in the end, the mother said, no, go ahead. You want to be a Jedi? Go ahead. You know. Well, um, did she say that? Kind of, sort of. You know. Not, uh, okay. I, maybe I got to watch the episode again. But from what, yeah. the, what I got from it, she was like, okay, go meet with the Jedi. Go talk to Jedi. But she told both of them to lie. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, like, she, well, I think Osho or the other one was really wanting to lie. But, um, right, right. But she, yeah. but she told them both to lie. I'll have to watch. Osha just didn't do it. Yeah, Osha just I, didn't do it. I thought yeah. the mom was like more supportive. That's what I got out of it. No, but, I don't think. I, I think because she straight up told us she was like, "Look, if you go, you're never gonna see us again." Like that's just what it is. So yeah. I don't think the mom was being supportive, but she wasn't just like, I don't know. Maybe I got to. Yeah, maybe I'll go watch it again. But either way, yeah. my point being is that they're the witches are like another religious order, like the Jedi, you know. And everyone's bitching about how the Jedi are portrayed really shitty. I don't agree because I the the Jedi have always been viewed differently by different planets. This has gone on in the extended universe, in old comics, in old books. The Mandalorians originally, Boba Fett, his people, they didn't like the Jedi. You know, I just read a bunch of Quinlan Voss comics, and he came from a planet. What with force sensitive wizards and shit who viewed the Jedi as a, like a religious order that colonized the galaxy, and they didn't trust the Jedi either. So he reluctantly joined the order. You know, okay. So take, the, take me, take so me. so the idea that the Jedi are, aren't as cool as everyone thinks is, is not a new concept in the Star Wars universe. So yeah. Okay, take me. I'm glad you said that. That uh, shit on the Jedi is not a new concept. It does feel like. Ever since Disney got a hold of them, that's all they've been doing. <laughs> well, okay. So, oh, I, I, I'll let you finish, but go ahead. Oh, I'll, I'll finish. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> now that you've said that, and I've, I've explained what I did like about the episode, these are the things I did like about the ex episode. Mm -hmm. However. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did like this show, right? <laughs> <laughs> However, I agree. The legacy. I, I get what people are saying about the legacy of the Star Wars universe and how these newer shows tend to shit on our favorite characters and our favorite themes and shit. You know, right. I feel that whole thing about them making the jet, like how they manifested these twins out of the force. I felt that undermines Anakin and the whole legend of Anakin. Thank you, Eli, because I did not want to go to war with you tonight over that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I do, I do get that. I do like. Okay, he, here's my thing. Anakin is the chosen one. Yeah. Keyword one. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be one person that does that shit. So you just can't go around just making clone babies and force babies and shit anytime you feel like it. And Palpatine spent his whole life trying to create an ultimate Sith. That's what the clones were for. That's what right. Snoke was supposed to be. So right. Palpatine couldn't do it. Right. But these chicks, these witches, just, oh, here's some twins out of the floor. <laughs> so it kind of undermines. Not one, but two. Right. Yeah. Yes. They just like, oh, we can do that with our ass, you know, you know, while, you know, taking a shit, you know. <laughs> so it just kind of undermines, you know, the legacy, the, 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 the original lore. And that's what I'm like, eh, you know, okay. And I get it. I get, oh, yes, they, I get the themes that they're trying to go for, but like everything else. Okay. You know, keep in mind, what, everything we're doing, we're having serious, like we're pointing out things we don't like about the show. Yeah. Notice what we didn't say. Woke. Yeah. All this other bullshit. So you can't just lump everybody that has a problem with this show into, oh, you're a racist, homophobe, transphobe. Is in sale. We're not all in the same boat. You can have issues with the show and have no problem with all the other bullshit that's going on. Like it's just we having we're naming what we have an issue with the show. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't but, give but a you shit. But you can't say that. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah, because that's you have how the, with the show. You're fucking racist. That's the how fuck. the internet is. Yeah, the internet. People are yeah. once it's zeros, <laughs> baby. Once it's zeros. Yeah. that's how it is. So yeah. So yeah, I do feel, and that's what I feel like a lot of these shows have done. I felt like the Mando shit on the Mandalorians. You know, right. they blew up. They blew up his ship. 
They fucking turn Boba Fett into the bitch that everyone thought he was. He's a bumbling idiot in the book, book of Boba Fett. You know, they blow, they, they break the, 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 the dark saber. Like, <laughs> you know, they, like they just shit on the Mandalorians and make them, they're falling out of the sky and dying. Like what the fuck? <laughs> that was kind of funny though. I know, I know it's not funny for you because there's your guys, but for me, that shit was funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the, you're, you're shitting on Mandalorians. You're shitting on, you, you know, Obi-Wan, like kicking Vader's ass over and over and over again, you know, and I get it. Yes. The lightsabers in the Obi-Wan show are all dazzling and all, and got all this pizzazz. And yes, in 1977, the, the lightsaber duels didn't have this great choreography for the kids who grew up on the prequels and shit. I get all that, but it wasn't about the choreography. It was about the emotional you know, weight of that scene. These were two rival foes meeting together after years, you know, of not seeing each other. But it turns out they've been seeing each other every week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Obi Wan's been kicking his ass. <laughs> like, like, you bite your boy before a game of Mortal Kombat. That's what they've been doing. So, hey, man. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So it's like they're just shitting on, you know, that's what I feel. They're just shitting on, you know, the legacy. And that's where I'm like, eh, you know, but yeah, however. Yeah, yeah. However, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what side you on right now. I don't know if you're going to however fuck this show. However. <laughs> that being said, I'm used to this shit button <laughs> because I'm an OG 77 Star Wars fan that, you know, I, I, I thought that I didn't, I wasn't a prequel fan. You know, I didn't, I didn't like what the prequels did. So I'm used to I'm used to Star Wars not being what I want it to be, and I've felt like that for decades now. So I'm pretty much used to this shit. So when I see everybody bitching and losing their fucking shit over this, you know, show, I'm like, dude, this, this now, has been always want, going. I do want to point out that yeah. all these people, like I know everybody's watching these YouTube because these YouTube grifters, millions of views on on these alkalite they're shitting on. I do want everybody to understand they're putting on performance for you. It's a grip. They have admitted it. They said it out their own mouths. They they don't just like Eli's is like that. He's apathetic about this shit. They said it too. Yeah. They just getting over anxious and just kicking over shit because they put a performance for you because they know yeah. they want you to click into it. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's all I want. But now, I'm still some, yeah, okay. Let's say good about this episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's say something good about this episode. Okay. And I'm the thing I'm saying is the thing that everybody else hated on this episode, but I'm the thing I like about it the fact that you, the thread they changed that shit the thread. Oh, the, now, the, the yeah, the, the force or whatever. Yeah, people yeah. hated that stuff like that, but I think I like that because when we think about what the the how they're portraying the Jedi in this episode, the Jedi of the Catholic Church, that's what they are. Yeah, yeah, they're a religious episode, order. They're yes, yeah, they're religious order. They see other people practicing uh, because the thread. Is just the same thing as the it's the same thing as you calling something different. Yeah, it's the same thing like other religions. Like we we people different people call okay. Well, let's let's go here. Hold up. It was a comment that I wasn't gonna click, but I'm gonna click it now just because it's it's relevant to what we were talking about now. Are you a Christian? We'll we'll talk about that in a second. Uh point <laughs> is that God is called by different names by different religions. You have Elohim, you have Yahweh, you have Jehovah, you have all these names out there, but guess what? It's all God, it's all the mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah. You just have different religions calling it different things. So when the Catholic Church going on, and then oh hell, you have uh the Norse Vikings, Thor. Yeah. People worship Thor at one point. Yeah. Then the Catholic Church came in there and now he's a comic book character. <laughs> so that's how it happened. So that's the same thing that these witches uh are also they have their own religious sector, but they know if the Jedi find out what they're doing, they're gonna cut the shit out because nobody's allowed because basically Jedi saying that nobody's allowed to practice the force other than them nobody's practice practice this religion other than them yeah it's all the same thing and yeah. so that's, that's that, one thing I did and like that goes like back to quinlan voss those comic books yes they were force users i mean quinlan yeah. voss had that psychic psychometry where he can touch an object and know the history and and that's how he's a, he was a tracker and shit you know right and so it was that same concept it's just different cultures that viewed the empire or the republic at the time as just you know an empire that was just trying to take over the galaxy. Co the colonize same the way galaxy. They said yeah. that anybody that's not practicing the force that we practice it is evil. The same way, like we said, uh, Thor and everything else was paganism. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. Meanwhile, they take all the. Let's let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's my thing. So everybody wants to say like this is the worst episode. So, so let me ask you this, Eli. 
did this i think you already answered this question but i just want to make sure we clear to say that did this episode break star wars no no okay that's all I want to say because that's that's pretty much the thing going on right now. They're saying that this particular episode right here broke Star Wars. Star Wars what I, done. What, yeah, because what I'm seeing, like I said, I'm an OG fan. I yeah. saw the original trilogy in the theater before George Lucas changed it. <laughs> yeah, you know. So what I'm seeing is what I've been seeing for a long time, and that's like every generation not getting into the new generation. Right. You know, like I didn't enjoy the prequels. But every but a bunch of people did a bunch of people. That's their trilogy. That's that that's where they started on. So they love the prequels, and then those people hate the new sequel, hate the Disney shit. Nobody's you gonna know? like though. Nobody gonna like it. You know. Internet, so you know. <laughs> but like, there's people who are like, there's kids that are getting into this shit. You know, I thought that shit too. There's people who grew up on the Clone Wars. Like that was their first thing in the Star Wars was the Clone Wars. That's why they loved Ahsoka. You know, because that was, you know, they saw that as they were kids, as kids, and they, they love that. So it's like I keep seeing generations and generations getting into this shit. And I just think that's a cool thing, you know, as a Star now, Wars fan. <laughs> now, we do have to, as far as this episode, Eli, and even though I know we don't want to talk about it, we do have to address the elephant in the room with this episode. Okay. Lesbian space witches. Okay. Yeah. That's. That we got to talk about it because honestly, that's been the tagline everybody's been talking about. I never thought that would end up in Star Wars because the last time I saw uh, a sci fi show with space lesbian witches was Emmanuel, Queen of the Galaxy. <laughs> Damn, you're going deep. <laughs> I'm going deep. See, there's some people that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, <laughs> but those that do know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. That's yeah. I'm well, now, everyone, thing, okay, yeah. everyone bitching about lesbian space witches is going to have no problem with Sydney Sweeney doing the right. same shit in yeah, Barbarella. Right. So fuck the fuck off, all you <laughs> motherfuckers. You're all full of shit, jerking right. off to lesbian porn, but bitching about this. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Pride, month, motherfucker. No, no, see it. No, see it. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Got the nerve to jerk off to lesbians, but then bitch, but then don't want them to have rights. Fuck y'all. Right. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh man. I, I think we said all we can say about this episode. So yeah. <laughs> all right. Let me say you can move on to the next part of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on to something lighter. We're gonna move on to something lighter. We're gonna talk about the video game section, you lie. All right, so we're gonna talk about Street Fighter Six. I've been in Street Fighter Six now. We're coming to summertime where you're gonna start getting like Evo and all these other game and tournaments coming to stuff like that because it's summertime. And Eli, I've been noticing something that you know I've been talking about Street Fighter, how I've been getting my ass beat lately. Yeah. Now, after did a while, find, did, I, I did came, you finally kick some ass? No, I didn't. But <laughs> I came to a I came to a, a epiphany, if you will, a, a realization. I realized what's going on why I've been getting my ass whooped. It's my controller. It's not me. Oh, oh yeah. okay. It's not, uh, it's not me. Obviously, it's, it's the not controller. Me. Yeah, it's it controller. Here's the thing, Eli. I know something. Something was going wrong. Reason I'm saying that is because, <laughs> okay, if some dude on the internet beats me, you know, in his mom basement, you know, this got a Sydney Sweeney body pillow that beats my ass on Street Fighter. <laughs> that's cool. I can deal with that. The problem is, my friends were beating my ass. We can't have that, Eli. We can't have that. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you using your Gordon Gartrell? <laughs> no, I, I threw that shit away. I threw that shit away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I threw that shit away all the time. Because my, my thing is, Eli, do you understand that when my friends beat my ass, it like it upsets the balance of, of everything? Like, because I'm supposed to be the guy that's supposed to do all this shit while they do all this shit. So if they're beating my ass, it kind of throws off the whole dynamic of the relationship. Like the universe is off balance if they beat me. So here's what I decided to do. Buy another controller. I'll show you. Okay, I uh, got it right here. Okay, it's all <laughs> okay. white. I didn't want it all white because I know it's gonna get dirty. It's the only one I can get at the time. Got it on a discount, but that's okay. So, after this podcast, I'm getting back on Street Fighter. Oh, I thought you were saying. So, watch what I did with this controller. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, thought, no. I thought you had a clip ready for us. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm learning it. I'm learning. I, okay. I'm gonna get my ass beat with it also, but I feel my. I'm not getting my ass beat as much. <laughs> <laughs> So next week I'll have some good footage for you on the new controller, how I'm beating everybody else like that and restore the balance to the universe. Because right now everything is thrown off right now. So okay. That's why it's raining outside. Because give me my ass beat. <laughs> All right. Let me say we move on to the next part of the podcast. Uh sure.
Okay. All right. So, like I said, it's kind of books where we talk about uh, comic book bullies. We talk about comic books. And I'm trying to say who's going to go first? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go first? Lee, I'm going to let you go first. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, what book did you blood want to talk hunt? About? Do some blood hunt? Get blood hunt out of the way? Let's just get this bullshit out the way. I, I don't. Even, I ain't even read it, so I can't even say if this bullshit had happened. Yet. You're not on the summer blockbuster, Marvel summer blockbuster. I, 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 I think I'm boycotting. I think I'm boycotting this. I'm gonna tell you why I'm boycotting. Okay, I think I. I think I have a good reason. Reason I'm boycotting is because Marvel is selling the red band books elsewhere, oh. and they're not telling us where they're selling them. So if you're gonna sell us half a book, and you're selling us the real version of the book, you gotta spend all this money. To buy like a neutered PG version of the book, fuck this book. So I just wait till this shit's over with and be done with it. So that's that's yeah. my thing. I didn't read uh, the, un, I didn't, un, unless you sell me on it, Eli. I did not read the Red Band. I, don't, I did not read any of the Red Band books because I can't find them. Because the Red <laughs> like, Band is on their website. It's on their website. They say, hey, we also got a Red Band, but they have no way to purchase it. No, yeah. Zip zero. Yeah. So that's what I tried to go get a physical copy of the first issue and they were out. Because I refuse to double buy this book. I am not doing that. <laughs> Fuck you, Marvel. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like, give, give me a little cool. synopsis yeah. of. <laughs> so uh, you can tell that no one's paying us after what he just said. <laughs> you're right. I, it was my fault. Yeah. We're, we're not comic story. They will not honor us. Yeah. We're, 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 we're not getting paid for but for any of this shit. This is all free entertainment. List, like I said, listen at your own discretion <laughs> right <laughs> don't at us no. <laughs> all right <laughs> all right so blood hope number three this oh, is like they, i said a shout out to uh jeffrey Verigan. yeah That's jeffrey Verigan, right. rest in peace yeah. good journey yeah. brother he's like, a this native whole artist. month they've been giving him a shout out so yeah. yeah there's his artwork he did a lot of cool covers indigenous artists so mm -hmm. um yeah so this is blood hunt marvel's big summer event um where vampires have taken over the earth um and blade is leading them so Blade is possessed by some evil something and is leading this giant vampire war against the Avengers. And some of them, some of them have like basically turned into vampires. As you saw on the cover, Miles Morales is a vampire. And he comes in the right in the beginning, he comes jumping into the sanctum uh, and, and starts attacking everybody. But Doctor Strange puts a spell and basically takes away his hunger. Still a vampire, but he's not gonna like suck anybody's blood. So he kind of puts them, you know, um, puts them. Oh yeah, and then there's Blade. Blade is Wait, uh. Max Strange's dead or something. Yeah, he's a vampire, but he's he's his astral plane self is still in there doing. So he's shit. a ghost vampire. No, no, he's just Doctor. Well, his 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 ghost ain't a vampire. His body is. Okay, yeah, we'll say you say his astral plane. Like, oh, like, okay, I was yeah, fun. yeah. Okay, so he's, he's dead. But, but his astral plane is floating around. So he's yeah, ghost. yeah, yeah. Basically, okay. he's ghost. Okay. He's astral plane, Doctor Strange, and his body's a vampire. So yeah. Um, so but, yeah, okay. and, and, and okay, Blade. So okay. His body's a vampire. His body running around doing crazy shit. I think they put a spell on his body. They like they they put a put spell. I don't know, dude. Why don't you okay. read this shit, man? <laughs> Asking me all these questions. I don't know. I barely pay attention to myself. <laughs> There's a thousand tie-ins to this shit, too, that I'm not reading. <laughs> right. But so basically they make a plan. They're like, okay, first of all, we need to get back the sun because the, the vampires put a like a you know a dark energy around the earth and sun, blocked yeah, out the yeah. sun. So it's endless night. Mm -hmm. So they need to get back the sun. So a couple of them say, okay, we're going to go do that. And then um, other said, people said, um, somebody else is going to do, they're, they got, they're basically splitting up into like basically planning shit out. And then the Avengers are like, and then we're going to, um, uh, we're going to call out Blade and get Blade out of, he's in, he's in Wakanda, you know, Blade's in Wakanda. Wait, I think wait. that's Blade. Okay. Yeah. Cause uh, okay. yeah, I forget. Bla he's they don't want to go meet him on his turf so that we got to call him out um oh i also forgot blade's daughter ha has to be the one to take him out because okay because i'm pretty sure it's a good reason behind it but yeah okay. because of reasons yeah, yeah. <laughs> dracula told her that like you're you're his daughter you're gonna have to be the one to get close to him and take it out take him out so she gets all pissed off and runs off and then they go chase her. And I think that's a tie-in. <laughs> we go see what yeah, happens. Yeah, we have it read. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, and like yeah, basically all the plans. We, I can't. Was it uh, Tigra and uh, somebody else has to go try and get the sun back? So that's a tie. -in. Them trying to get the sun to shine again. Okay. And then I think that's Blood Hunters or whatever. Yeah, and then I forget somebody else is doing something. I think magic, some kind of magic, and that's a tie-in. And then th this book is the Avengers. Okay, we got We got to call. We got to get Blade to come to us. So, um, Captain America. In this case, it's Sam. Sam America. Okay. <laughs> he he gets on like the the feed and broadcasts this big big ass inspiring speech. You know to inspire everybody. You know, it's like we're the Avengers, motherfuckers. We've dealt with this shit before. We kick Null's ass. We kick Hydra's ass. We kick everybody's ass. And you vampires, we're gonna kick your ass too. And just basically gives this big inspiring speech. And Blade's like, oh hell no. That's it. Let's go. So that's about where it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. So yeah, I mean, it's all right. You know, like it, it's okay. It's it's uh yeah, the Avengers versus vampires. It's you yeah. know, it's all right. I guess I don't know. Three out of five. These, three out of five. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm talking all this shit, but I actually did read one of the uh tie-ins. Yeah, the Black Panther one, right? Yeah, that one and another one. Oh, okay, you read one? The, the Avengers. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but not that Avengers. I mean, it's, it's Avengers, but it's like the backup team, the B team, or whatever, because the okay. first team got taken out by Blade and his. Vampire Avengers, what the, the Blood Coven or something? Something like that. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. So this is the the B team Avengers. Still led by. Oh, Captain so America. this is your review. Okay. This is my review. Oh, oh, my fault. Yeah. Uh, this is my review. So we're doing Blood Hunt Captain America. I'm sorry, Blood Hunt Avengers, but it's like a team Captain America, Steve Rogers put together to fight vampires in New York because you know that everybody's every place in Wakanda and in space and shit like that. They're in New yeah. York. They're trying to save New York. So yeah. So that's the thing. Let's start with the team. I'll probably do a recap of who's on the team. Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, so the last issue. Remember, they there was a helicarrier that was over New York snatching up kidnapping people. And they found out it was Baron Blood. Vampire Batman, whatever. You know. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So, Kate Bishop, you know, Hawkeye, she asked Captain America, wait, how do you know this guy? He's like a 100-year-old Nazi vampire. And can't. And, Cap asking her, like, you really think I wouldn't know a 100-year-old Nazi vampire? So they fight. So she shoots him with an arrow. Cap throws his shield. He catches the arrow, catches the shield. He's like, y'all got to be better than that. And then burns his hand because Cap coated his shield with silver because he's fighting vampires. So, ah. yeah. Yeah. So Baron Blood, like, okay, well, fine. I'm Let's go one-on-one -on -one then. And Cap America, like, okay, I'm going to take Baron Blood one-on-one. -on -one, and you, since I'm going to take him out, Y'all, I'm gonna leave the vampires disorganized. Y'all get them, but if you leave, we'll be disorganized. Like, no, you won't because you're Avengers and let's go. So, Cap actually runs away, <laughs> he doesn't fight him, he runs away. Reason he's running away is because he's trying to like lure him through there. Meanwhile, oh, Hercules on the team, also, he's like the strong guy. Oh, <laughs> and you got Hazmat, she can, she's a young Avenger, whatever, strange Avenger. I don't know. Anyway, she has a power to create any kind of radiation, she creates sunlight. She blinds them, doesn't kill them, and lets them run away while they get basically look for them. Because what they're doing is that these vampires are kidnapping people and storing them on it. So they're going to rescue the people. So while Hercules grabs her and jumps out of the way, Quicksilver has a, a, a stake in his hand because they can't see it. They've been blinded. And Quicksilver's like, don't worry, I'll take him out. So he's going to, you know, super speed, you know, stab all of them and shit. Meanwhile, Captain America run away from Baron Blood. He's like, I'm going to catch you, Captain America. I've been trying to kill you for centuries, and I'm going to do this shit. You know, talking all this cash money shit and captain america's just luring him you know uh he's flying after him meanwhile they're still fighting vampires and they find the, the people and they basically escort them through uh, skate pods and basically she's saying she always wanted to be on a helicarrier she always wanted to be a shield lady she never was they eject and all shit like that so they they run away and then that's when they find out cap's like okay i got him where i want him to did you get all the people out and they they find out there's some way more people in there bearing blood finally catches up with them he like Captain America, I'm gonna turn you into a, one of my minions and shit, you know. Oh, uh, and Captain America finds out that there's way more vampires on the ship than what they thought it was, because he was keeping the vampires in coffins until they finally eventually take over the world. Meanwhile, they find out that there's way more people on board, also, because basically he's like gonna feed them to his vampire people when when uh they finally take over the world. 
So she's like, okay, we can free these people, but if I free them, they're going to act all crazy and shit like that. And that's when uh, Kate Bishop is like, don't worry. I'm going to give, she decides to give this rousing speech and shit like that. Oh, and Captain America like kills all the vampires. He like throws a, a, a grenade right into him and boom, blows him up, kills all the vampires. They did. Uh, and Kate Bishop gives a rousing speech to get everybody. We can, we are the Avengers. You have a living God. You have a super speedster. We need you to help us take them out. And yeah, so they're all going to team up and, and take out the, the vampires and shit. Meanwhile, Captain America was, where was he leading Baron Blood to the whole time? To the steering wheel of the Hela character. Because Captain America's like, out of all people, you want to run around a Hela character. You wanted me to run around a Hela character? Because like I said, he used to run S.H.I.E.L.D. So he used to run it. He used to own a Hela carrier. So he's driving it, and he's about to crash it into New York to be continued. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. I kind of just ran through this shit. Kind of easy breezy. <laughs> kind of, this kind of a throwaway book, but it's like, yeah. Nazi vampire, whatever. So yeah, uh, three point five out of five. The definition of filler, but yeah, yeah. I, I like I like this team. I like this team dynamic. You know, Quicksilver, Hercules, Kate Bishop, Cap. It's 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 a fun dynamic. Even though yeah. the story is just throwaway. So yeah. I mean, yeah, like like we we thought this about DC versus vampires. Like it's it's all right. You know. Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Like it's just fine. It's like it's it's the summer blockbuster. You know, so yeah, so that's cool. But at least in that one, that alternate universe DC shit, like they would turn it into zombies and shit. You know, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, so, uh, all, all right, right, so yeah, what, what you got next? <laughs> well, I have Transformers number nine. Transformers number nine. Okay. The Energon universe continues. So, um, so yeah, I'm all. I've been, you know, everybody who knows who's been listening, I've been all over this book. This is like my favorite comic right now. Um, Daniel Warren Johnson, he's no longer drawing. Um, oh man, because that didn't he say that he was only gonna draw like so many issues? Yeah, so he's but he's still writing it, you know. Um, so yeah, we got Jorge Corona and Mike Spicer doing the art, and Daniel Warren Johnson. I mean, is it's just, mimicking his art style, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, still very yeah, but he, he's still writing it, and he's a good he's a solid writer too, you know. Yeah. Um, so basically, this has you know. Last last issue, Soundwave is back on Cybertron, and the Decepticons have opened up the space bridge to bring him here, because they found that Earth has all this energy to re to you know reignite Cybertron's energy. So they bring Soundwave over. Okay. Um. And uh. And, and yeah. So then there's the big battle. Optimus Prime and a bunch of Autobots show up, and they start you know fighting. You know. You know. Um. They kill Ratchet. Is that Ratchet, who it was? Which, which, which so Cliff, Ratchet's like I'd like the ambulance. Okay, the, the white and and, okay. and and uh and a Cliff Jumper was a Cliff Jumper. They were right about to shoot Cliff Jumper, but Ratchet jumps in front and takes the shot and dies. You know, um, and then uh uh we go back to Earth and Spike, who's been injured in the hospital, the human kid. Um, he gets kidnapped by uh not uh, a train. What's his name? Auto train or whatever. That you remember that um that space shuttle, that purple space shuttle. I don't know if you remember. The... Was it good or bad? He's a Decepticon. He's a bad guy. I think I remember him. Yeah. yeah. But oh, oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah. That was the one they they all the Decepticons flew around with in space. Yeah. The he was like the black and purple uh, space yeah. shuttle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. So he kidnap. He comes to the hospital and kidnaps. You know, Spike. And basically said, yeah, I'm going to take you and we're going to, I'm taking you back to the Decepticons and we're going to experiment on you and shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, uh, and, and he has, he regrets it too. I'm sorry about this. You know, I really feel sorry for your people. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not really, you know, here to destroy weaker beings than me, but, um, we need, we need the earth's energy and we're here to take it. And you guys are all going to die. And I feel really bad about that, <laughs> 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 you know, but then, um, who, oh shit, who was it? Somebody saves him. What, what the hell was that? I, yeah, I, gotta, I gotta look it up now. He gets saved. Um, it wasn't gears. Who was it? Another Autobot ends up saving, like basically jumps on, like jumps onto auto train when he's flying and breaks uh spike out. I'm just waiting for, Kindle to load. 
<laughs> oh, so they so they say Spike in this issue? Yeah. Okay. Um, who was that? Beachcomber. The fuck? Beachcomber's another Autobot. He saves uh, Spike, crashes auto train, and like, yeah. Um, you, you digging into crates with this one. I'm like, yeah, yeah, beachcomber. yeah. This this is going deep. And basically saves Spike. Says, Come on, I'm here to rescue you. And that's where it says to be continued. You know. Um, so basically, yeah, the, the space bridge is open. Soundwave has come, came through the door. So yeah, they have the gateway to Cybertron. You know. Um, and yeah, we still haven't seen any GI Joes yet, you know? So uh, for those who don't know, this Energon universe is Transformers in GI Joe, um, going to be crossing over. Um, and we've had the Duke and the Cobra commander books, and now there's the Scarlet book and that the Destro book I think is coming out next week and that they're dealing with, um, they've been finding giant robots. They don't know it's the Transformers yet, but they're mentioning giant robots. Cobra Commander saw Megatron's like, you know, remains and they're using his energy and shit to Destro's using the Energon energy to make weapons. And so, yeah, they're crossing over, but they're doing just enough. They're not like, they're not all, it's all building. It's fun watching them build up to this, to this crossover event. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, like I said, this is like my favorite book right now. You know, four out of five did not much happen. I mean, there was a lot, there was a, some cool action as always. Um, but yeah, it was, it's still a lot of fun. So I'll give it a four out of five. Nice. Nice. Okay. All right. So where are we at now? Where we at? My last book, last book I'm going to do, right. uh, still on retro. Okay. But we're getting close oh, to the end. This, yes. Yeah. The end. This I always forget. Until we get up. This is the penultimate. Uh, issue of it. So this is one before we're about to finish it up. Uh, for those who know what we're talking about, we're talking about uh, Captain America, 90s Captain America, Streets of Poison is what we're doing. Let me see if I can mm-hmm. get this bad boy in here. Uh, so for those that have been keeping up what's going on, some of you have, but for those that haven't keeping up going on, Captain America is on meth. That's the storyline. So yeah. Uh, and he's trying to stop a drug war and obviously it's his own meth. He's losing so yeah so they finally caught him in the last ep- episode uh last issue so we know where captain america is right now he's caught the last issue headed back to avengers mansion and this book advertises crossbones versus bullseye so we finally get them meeting for the first time and, and squaring off with each other so boom let's see where we go to i hope this is where i left off i hope this is where we are because I, I kind of forgot i might have lost track where we are in this book oh um, let's see where we at okay so book starts off with uh bullseye and red skull okay so red skull is having a meeting with bullseye uh, crossbone because crossbones was supposed to assassinate kingpin in the last issue he fucked it up so he basically having a meeting with red skull asking why he fucked it up meanwhile bullseye is on the balcony getting ready to uh assassinate red skull he's like okay as soon as he gets out this meeting i'm putting in there so crossbones and he's telling him okay you got to drive me to the myth lab tomorrow uh and we're going to finish the conversation he's like cool boom as soon as he leaves the room Bullseye jumps in there. Boom. Headshots, Red Skull. Headshot. Book's over. Everybody go home. Okay. So he's like, well, that was easy. Uh, and then Crossbones jumps in. He was like, what did you do? And then here we go. So he starts shooting. He was like, damn, that was a fast shot. So he, he's faster than he thought he was. He starts shooting at him. Blast him. Keeps blast, keep blasting. And he was like, okay, I'm out of ammo. You can come out. And he comes out with the, uh, a table. So, but he's got a shield, throws it off the wall, bounce on the back of Bullseye. Bam, close range, not even a competition. He's about to crush the scope before he even chance with it. But Bullseye has more weapons on him. Oh, and he spits his fake tooth out in, in uh, Crossbone's eye. The fake tooth that he had like in the second issue of this run. So spits that in his face. And when he's blinded, boom, stabs him in the arm and just runs away. He was like, and you owe me a fake tooth, Chubbs. And while he does that, he does a die hard out of the window so he jumps out the window cable guns the side of the uh building and then goes in through the bottom window and just disappears and crossbow like fuck where'd he go to so he realized he lost him and risco's dead or is he it was a robot the whole time and the robot's telling him i'm just a robot still make sure you meet me at the myth lab tomorrow or wait for the instructions you're like damn okay so where's finally captain america so what happened to captain america captain america 
was high on drugs, still high on drugs. But the reason he was hallucinating, going crazy was because he had been he hadn't slept in a week. That's what's making him go nuts. So they got him there and they're like, they can't really do anything on him because this is way past my expertise. So they're just waiting for Hank Pym to get there. Hank Pym is on the West Coast, with the West Coast Avengers. So they got to wait for him to come to the East Coast, to the East Coast Avengers. So until then, Cap is sedated. And they're like, oh, until then, we can't do anything. So then you got Diamondback and Black Widow just having a conversation. And Black Widow is trying to tell Diamondback, I know you love Cap. I know you care for Cap. But she's mad at her because she hesitated in the last fight. And when she could have took Cap out with those diamond tips, she didn't do it. She was like, so next time, make sure you do that. And I understand you're trying to get your shit together because you're a former assassin. I'm a former assassin. We'll do our thing. So, and she's like, if you need some tips or techniques, call me sometime. And then Black Widow just walks out and Diamondback thinks to herself, damn, did I just turn gay? So, yeah. So, back to Kingpin. What did Kingpin just do? Bullseye is bragging, talking about the red skull is the dead skull. And Kingpin's like, yeah, okay, whatever. He don't believe for a word that Bullseye actually killed King uh, Red Skull, but he think, but he believes that Bullseye thinks that. So he tells Bullseye, disappear, leave me alone, don't go anywhere, don't contact me in the next 90 days, I'll contact you when you need to. So this is it. Bullseye is out of the book. He's done. So And Typhoon Mayor is like, do you really think he did that? He's like, of course he didn't do that. Bullseye ain't that good. So, uh, But at least we know who's running the meth in the city right now. So we got to find out what's going on. Uh, and meanwhile, Red Skull realized that if Kingpin has guys good enough to touch him in New York, then Kingpin is not some random ass silly drug dealer the whole time. He's actually a force to be reckoned with because that's why he's trying to take over Kingpin's territory because he had no respect for Kingpin. But now he realized Kingpin is that guy. So meanwhile, we got Captain America and he is been asleep the whole time and he's dreaming. And we get a dream sequence of when he became a suit when the first time he became a super soldier. And he sees the needle that gave him the powers to begin with, and he realized how much it looks like a junkie's needle. And who he meets? Dr. Erskine, the guy that, you know, invented the super soldier serum to begin with. And he was like, is the super soldier serum a drug, doctor? He's like, of course it's a drug. Everything special about you, Rogers, came out of a needle. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what he really wanted to say. Yeah. Oh! Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say it later. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he's just like, without the drugs, you were nothing. And he was like, no, th- what are you talking about? I am not the super soldier serum. Yes, it made me strong, but it didn't make me brave. Yes, it made it gave me uh sp- it gave me speed, it didn't give me skills, it didn't train, it gave me, it didn't give me training. I made that for myself. He was like, No, you ain't shit. And so Erskine turns into red skull in his mind. He was like, You are nothing. You just the first person to get the drug. If we gave that drug to anybody, they would have came him. Look at you. You're just another drug addict. You're just another junkie on the street. You can't do anything without your drugs, without your serum. And he's basically talking shit to him in the day. And that's when Captain America like, nah, you can't do it because y'all done had all these super soldiers, people to take super soldier drugs before. Hulk, uh, US agent, all these other people. None of them are me. That was the reason I'm Captain America. And Captain America's just flipping the fuck out. He's just tearing apart the bed, throwing shit, you know, all stuff like that. The drugs are nothing to do with me. And then he's just on the ground, just, you know, in the fetal position. Hank Pym finally walks in the room, sees him. Cap's looking like uh, Pookie on New Jack City, you know. So <laughs> he's he like, help me, Hank, help me. He's like, man, don't worry. So Cap's fucked up. He, he's out of it. So Hank's like, he's going to get him back back on his feet. So meanwhile, and you know what? Red Skull gave a really compelling argument on why Crystal Meth took over in the 90s. Because, okay, so you got crack. But the thing cheaper? is cheaper that's one reason so i'm i'm, I'm a, he's selling all of us on crystal meth so yeah it's cheaper also <laughs> <laughs> with crack you know all the not all the ingredients of crack are legal so it's hard to get your hands on it meanwhile with crystal meth all the components ingredients of crystal meth are legal <clears throat> it's the crystal meth itself that's illegal so that means you don't have to like go over to nicaragua or you know mexico and fly you know components of do you make crack in here it's all right here, baby. It's American made. So, yeah. <laughs> so, but the reason he's here in the meth lab, or we're even here in New York to begin with, because he wants to talk to Low Life. Low Life is the guy that started this whole gang war, the whole thing. So, he wanted, he asked Crossbones, where is he? And Crossbones is like, oh, I ain't seen Low Life in, in a few weeks. He's like, if I find out somebody got to Low Life before I could get to him, I'm going to do this to him. Bam. And he just kills the secretary. 
Damn. It turns into like, they're like, wait, why don't you do that? Because I didn't like the way she was staring at me the whole time. <laughs> so that's what she did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, and then he tells Crossbow, okay, Crossbow, here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to get on the phone with Kingpin Men. I want you to tell Kingpin that I want to have a face to face meeting with him. They're like, okay, we're going to end this gang war right now. So, yeah. So, me and we get back to Hank Pym. He's talking to Dr. Kincaid. I don't know who Dr. Kincaid is. It doesn't really matter. And basically, he's saying that Hank Pym is telling him, I got bad news. I can't isolate the myth in his system from the super soldier serum because his body, because in my, you know, scope and everything like that, they both recognize him as foreign bodies. So, I can't tell what's what because they're both drugs. So, the only thing we can do to save Cap, we got to give him a blood transfusion. They're like, but if you give Cap a blood transfusion, won't that take the super soldier serum out of his body plus the plus the uh crystal meth? Like, yeah, we do, but hopefully, maybe, just maybe, if I get this, get it out of his system, I can isolate it then. And Kincaid's like, well, what if you can't? They're like, well, if I can't, well, in order to save Steve Rogers, we may have to kill Captain America. So the only way to save him is to get the super soldier serum out of his body, out of his out of his bloodstream. So so we are at the Yankee Stadium. And I found this disrespectful. The score is right now, they're facing the Red Sox, and it's two to twenty-six. Now, how the <laughs> hell, how the hell are you a New York writer? You write for Marvel and you have the Yankees getting their ass with that bad. But anyway, we're not gonna talk about that. Kingpin is in the uh skybox, and basically he talked to like George Steinbrenner or something like that, and basically saying, Don't worry, we're gonna after the game is over, we're gonna leave the Yankee Stadium uh lights on the whole time because that's where they're gonna meet Red Skull. So they're going to meet him in Yankee Stadium. And we've already swept everything. We're going to make sure nothing's going on like that. Meanwhile, I'll cut back to cut back to Cap. And it's done. The blood transfusion is done. So the super soldier serum is out of his body. So why is he still swollen and shit like that? Because he works out every day and being an Avenger is good cardio. So he's actually not going to lose any muscle mass unless he actually stops, you know, extensive working out. But he needs to know whether or not he can still be Captain America without the super soldier serum. So he decides to leave meanwhile piggy carter sees him on the monitor she's like oh i gotta call somebody i'm not gonna get in trouble again but before she presses the button she was like wait a minute let me just talk to cap see what's going on and she talks to cap she's like cap where you going you're like look i've had the super soldier serum in my body for 100 years or 50 years whatever you want to say it is but i need to know now can i still be captain america without it i need to know is captain america the drug or the man so please don't tell anybody peggy and walks out she's like i am so fired yeah so meanwhile with the new york uh the yankee stadium and red skull helicopters in and he's just like look kingpin i got snipers on you you got snipers on me let's cut the chit chat meet me on the pitcher's mound right now and kingpin comes down there and he talks to him and when they try red skull tries to be like hey how you doing like i ain't got time for this shit i'm on a schedule i have a business run i'm a busy man what the fuck do you want, Red Skull? And while they're about to get their shit going on, Captain America, with no super soldier serum, is headed towards the end of finale of a gang war with all of Kingpin's army, all of Red Skull's army, ready to take him on to be continued. So, yeah. Right. And the next issue is the, the finale of this. So, that's it. So, that's the whole point. So, Captain America has to see, can he be Captain America without drugs? That's the whole point of the story. So this is the most <laughs> '90s superhero story you could possibly get. <laughs> That's funny about that Yankee game because I think it was last year. Yeah, I don't remember what team it was, mm -hmm. but the Yankees got their asses whooped. Like what? It was the first top of the first inning. I think it was like twelve to zero. Like the Yankees didn't even get up to bat yet, and it. <laughs> <laughs> was, all was, that money they pay for the Yankees to get their ass with like that. that, that yeah, it was, it was pretty sad. I was like, God, because I'm a I, yeah, I'm a Yankees fan. I'm from New York, so yes, I am a Yankees fan. <laughs> I was like, you got to be a you got to be from New York to be a Yankees fan because everybody they're like the villains. Yeah, I I, I I get it, but no, I I got it. No, I but hey, I remember I I remember when they didn't win anything for like 20 years. So okay. <laughs> so 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 in the 90s, this makes sense to get their ass with like that. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, that may make sense. That may make sense. Because yeah. now it's just like, okay, this is science fiction here to watch the, the Yankees yeah. they ass up like this, especially by the Red Sox. Well, That's yeah, I was wondering, like, is it a was somebody from Boston that wrote that? 
<laughs> that's what I wanted. Like, no, nah, Gru- Gruwal was from is from New York. I think there's no there's no way he would write this shit like that. But anyway, that's 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 our sports talk of the night. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, shoot, any other books you got, Eli? No, nah, I'm booked out. Okay, all right. So, like I said, if you listen to this song, definitely like, share, subscribe. Oh, uh, it's been a quiet, easy breeze tonight. You know what, Eli? That is okay. Yeah, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that because the last few weeks have I love y'all. Y'all have been hectic. <laughs> y'all been running us ragged, man. So I don't mind having an easy breezy night this week. Yeah, like it's a good thing. Yeah, we 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 would have been even shorter if it wasn't for the Star Wars talk. Like, <laughs> yeah, we had, we had we had to go in. You know, we couldn't pass that up. So yeah. <laughs> uh, and y'all know the routine. Like I said, if you listen long in the thirty seconds, we appreciate you. Just jump in. I know there's a lot of new subscribers jumped in because I know y'all have been trafficked in here from uh, the orgy video with me, Eli, and David. Oh yeah, yeah. You, it, you know what we're talking about, so it, it makes sense if you're saying it. So, yeah. <laughs> that sounds bad, but it's really right. not. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, we're gonna come in with ne- uh, something next week. I don't know what we're gonna talk about next week. I think I had it in my mind. Oh, I know what we're gonna talk about next week, Eli. All right. You may or may not get caught up, but next week is the season finale of Doctor Who. Oh shit! I haven't watched. Yeah, I have not been caught up. You know I haven't what? watched it in a while. Yeah. If if more people were watching this show, they'd be more pissed than they would be a Star Wars. Yeah, they'd be. I think because it's not American, they don't care. It's not American. Like it's that, people aren't really. But it's America. Yeah, I don't they, watch that shit. This is like, yeah. <laughs> All right. But until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We we'll talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time. Same bullet channel. <laughs>